Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, we are going to study the Hilbert transform. Hilbert transform is going to come in handy when we are studying the mathematical representation of the single side band. That is when we are discussing the single side band in time domain representation. Notice that we have a term transform over here. Remember that it is not like the Laplace transform or the Fourier transform where the domain of the signal is changed. In Hilbert transform, the domain of the signal is not changed. In fact, Hilbert transform transforms the uh, phase of a signal by pi by 2. So Hilbert transform is actually a phase shifter which shifts every component of a signal by pi by 2. Now how does he do it? We need to know its mathematical form. Now for example, if I have a signal x of t and I want to take its Hilbert transform. So I'm going to take Hilbert transform of this x of t. The resulted signal is going to be denoted by x h of t. And that is going to be equal to 1 by pi integration from minus infinity to infinity x of alpha divided by t minus alpha t alpha. Let me name it as equation 1. So this is the equation of Hilbert transform and if you look closely this is actually a convolution of x of t with 1 by pi t. So this is actually convolution so this is this term is actually convolution of x of t this is the convolution symbol with 1 by pi t. This equation number 1 is actually this thing. How? We know that convolution is given as if, if I am taking the convolution of for example two functions or two signals that is x1 of t and x2 of t then the convolution of this signal is going to be equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity x1 of ta multiplied by x2 of t minus ta into d ta. Now if I take the convolution of this function that is x of t convolve there is a convolution operation here convolve with this 1 by pi t then this will be equal to in minus infinity to infinity x of ta 1 by pi t minus ta d ta so here actually this ta is replaced by alpha. So actually this is given as x of t convolved with 1 by pi t and I am going to replace this ta by alpha and I am going to take the 1 by pi out. So this will be 1 by pi integration from minus infinity to infinity x of alpha alpha 1 divided by t minus alpha the alpha which is basically the equation number one we can look at here now these two equations are the same let me name it as equation two so equation one and two are the same which means that this is basically x of t convolved with one by pi t now let us find the uh, Fourier transform of this equation number one let us find the Fourier transform of x of t and one by pi t so I am going to take the Fourier transform of x of t and 1 by pi t. That is I am going to take the Fourier transform of x h of t because x h of t is denoted by that. So we are going to take the Fourier transform of x h of t which means that we are going to take the Fourier transform of x of t and convolve with 1 by pi t. Now when we convert the uh, convolution into frequency domain the convolution changes into multiplication so this will actually be equal to Fourier transform of x of t multiply by r times the Fourier transform of I am going to write the multiply by Fourier transform of 1 by pi t so this Fourier transform of x of t is actually x of x f and that is multiplied by the Fourier transform of this thing which is 1 by pi t. So this is the Fourier transform of x h of t and let me name it as equation a. 
So now we are going to find the Fourier transform of 1 by pi t and then we are going to plug in here. So let us find the Fourier transform of 1 by pi t. Now we know that the Fourier transform of the signum function, the Fourier transform of the signum function is actually equal to 1 by j pi f. And we also know that duality property. That is, when when the Fourier transform of when the, the Fourier transform of g of t is if j of f, then the Fourier transform of g of t will be equal to g of minus f. So it means the Fourier transform of this thing, if this is replaced by t, then this will be so the Fourier transform of 1 by j pi of t because f is now replaced by t this will be equal to signum of minus f and now because signum is a is an odd function signum is an odd, for odd function so i'm going to take this out so this will be 1 by j pi of t this will be minus signum of f which means that the Fourier transform of pi t will be equal to minus j signum of f. Let me name it as equation b. Now I am going to plug it over here. I am going to plug it over here. I have found the Fourier transform of 1 by pi t which is my, minus j signa, signum into f. So I am going to plug it over here. So the Fourier, Fourier transform of this Hilbert function that is x h of t is equal to x of f multiplied by minus j signum of f. If we rearrange it, this is actually equal to minus j x of f signum of f. So this is the Fourier transform of the Hilbert transform. Let me name it as equation c. So this is the Fourier transform of the Hilbert transform. So I can write it by capital X h of f. So this is equal to minus j x of f and signum of f. Now we know about the signum function. The signum function is like this. So if I I'm if I'm here to plot the signum function, then the signum function is the value of the signum function is equal to 1 for f greater than 0 and is equal to minus 1. This is for example minus 1 for f less than 0. So this is actually my signum of f. So this is my signum function. Now I can write this as such because signum function is equal to this thing. So I can write this as that x h of f is actually equal to minus j x of f for f greater than 0. And this is equal to j x of f for f less than 0. So I can write this like this. So this is my definition of x uh, uh, h of f. And now this minus j can be written as e power minus j pi by 2. So I can write this as such. Let me write it over here. I can write this as this is actually x h of f is actually equal to x of f e power minus j pi by 2 for f greater than 0 and this is equal to x of f e power j pi by 2 for f less than 0. So this is my definition of x h of f. Now we know about the uh, tra transfer function. For example, if I have the x of t over here and then I have for example the Hilbert transform which is the h of t and at the output I have for example the output of the Hilbert transform which is h of f. So then in that case I have the h of f is equal to in that case I can write that h of f is actually equal to minus j into signum of f. There will be no x of f part in that case when I am talking about the transfer function. This is my output and when I am talking about the transfer function, the transfer function is output by input. So in that case there will be no x h of f. Fine. So in that case I can write this as that 
if i want to write this into convert this into a transfer function i can write this as that h of f is basically equal to e power minus j pi by 2 for f greater than 0 and this is equal to e power j pi by 2 for f less than 0 so now this is going to be my definition of the transfer function of the Hilbert transform so the magnitude of this is 1 and this is actually uh, shifting the phase of the every component of the message signal by pi by 2 so this is the definition of the Hilbert transform it is a phase shifter which shifts every component of the message signal by pi by 2 so this Hilbert transform actually shifts every component of the message signal by pi by 2 and this comes in very handy when we are discussing the mathematical representation of the single sideband so this was all about the Hilbert transform if you like my video please subscribe to my channel technically explained thank you